Today, every day, small cap investors visit Agoracom knowing this is the day to discover the world's next great company, to have their dreams come true. That's why I take to the open road, to find them, to tell their stories, to engage them, to bring them to life. Because they want to connect with you from your office, your phone, your home, anywhere. Agoracom, find your dream. Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives about what's going on at their companies. With us again, we're happy to have them back, Francis Duve, Chief Executive Officer at Zen Graphene Solutions, the company trains on the TSX Venture Exchange under the stock symbol ZEN. For those of you who are new to the story, Zen is the emerging graphene technology company. They've discovered the largest and very rare ultra high purity graphite deposit in Northern Ontario called the Albany Graphite Deposit. More than just lip service though, independent labs in Japan, the UK, Israel, USA, and Canada have demonstrated already that Zen's Albany Graphite Deposit, uh, graphite, sorry, is easily converted to graphene. Right now they're pursuing potential application in five verticals, including aerospace, biomedical, water treatment, transportation, civil engineering. Here to talk about all that is Francis. Welcome back, my friend. Hey, George. Happy to be back. Thank you for having me. Well, we got you back because you've got a lot going on. You've been busy throughout the whole summer. Let's talk about the practical side first. You've been looking at many applications. You've announced many applications. They all look pretty promising. Which ones are the ones that potentially are looking more promising right now and maybe differentiating themselves? Yeah. You know what, George? It's such a massive market. It's really almost what graphene cannot do. Um, we're seeing it in batteries, we're seeing it in water desalination membranes, we're seeing it in polymers. Uh, the automotive industry is, is really going hard at graphene. They want to make cars that are lighter yet stronger, uh, more, more sound absorption. So graphene can do a lot of those things and that's why all these industries are trying to catch up to uh, the one player that's leading the field there, which is Ford. Um, so there's just a, a lot of different markets. Uh, some are val more valuable than others. So we're really trying to concentrate on the ones that uh, will have better margins for us uh, going down the road here. And to that end, you guys now have a production facility in Guelph. So clearly, if you got the production facility, you must be honing in. So tell us about the production facility, why that's such a big step, and what you might be honing in on. Well, we've been using university labs to produce our uh, graphene, graphene oxide so far, our quantum dots, and we needed to take charge of that process. We're getting requests for bigger and bigger sample size from some of these end users, and we have to ask our university partners to actually stop doing research and concentrate on making a, a sample uh, for these end users. We're having to delay our research for that, which we don't want to do. So this facility, uh, we can call it a production facility, but it's, it's really a small scale facility at this point. We're producing, you know, we're looking at kilograms. So it's kind of a pilot plant stage. Uh, we're looking at producing kilograms out of there. And this will allow the universities to keep doing what they do best, which is research, and allow us to, uh, you know, continue making the samples that we need to develop our business with our end users. Uh, and we'll also be doing some of our own research uh, inside there so we can have some better control uh, on the IP development. Uh, right. that, Go ahead. Go ahead. That facility is in Guelph. It's in partnership uh, with Guelph University. Uh, Dr. Chen's group is our most senior research group. Uh, they've been working with us for over six years now. Uh, we're going to be taking some of those students uh, that have been working with our material for years now and, and doing uh, what's called a my tax program where the it's a government program where uh, they spend 50% of their time in the university and 50% of the time in industry and my tax will actually pay 50% of their salaries so it's a great program for these students it's a great program for us it's a win-win uh, for everyone involved so we're pretty excited about that partnership with wealth I find it interesting that you started that conversation by saying you're getting a lot of requests for product, uh, how's that happening? Is it that is it just organic because the world is finding out with all these you know partnerships and relationships you've got that the word is getting out there, or are you guys 
more actively seeking you know potential customers and trying to get your product and sample pro sample size into them at this point it really is organic uh, as you know we've taken over about 17 months ago january this year we actually renamed the company and in june this year we we launched a new website uh, optimized on the web so that people that were looking for graphene could find us and that's uh, led to a lot of calls from various industries, uh, chemical industries, uh, the, the chemical industry itself for um, making polymers, monomers, uh, different rubbers. There's a huge industry there. They have a keen interest. They're supplying the automotive industry. Um, so these companies are, are now coming to us and saying, hey, uh, we'd like to see what you've got. So um, there's a lot of interest out there right now. You announced some encouraging results uh, with the U UBC, University of British Columbia, Okanagan. It's on aluminum casting or alloys, which doesn't sound very sexy, right? Uh, especially when you, when, you, when you hear about all the different potential applications for graphene. But what's important about that one? A couple of things. Aluminum is still a very, very large market in the world. Uh, when you use uh, aluminum, you have to do grain refinement. Uh, to make the, the, uh, the aluminum better, stronger, and the titanium is used to do that. Well, we found that our reduced graphene oxide could actually do the same function, but it didn't have the drawback of titanium, which reduced the electrical conductivity and the heat tolerance of the aluminum. So it's, it's a real exciting opportunity. Again, the automotive industry has a lot of interest in aluminum that could be still as strong as before, but now have electrical conductivity along with um, better heat tolerance. So it's a, it's a potentially huge market for us. You've got you know, a lot of these great applications. You know, naturally, people at home are probably ask themselves, Okay, what does the timeline look like for for you know maybe commercializing some of these applications? So, what does that look like? And I, I, when I mean, I'm not asking for a specific date, obviously, but are we five years down the road? Are we one year down the road? How far away are you from starting to commercialize some of these applications? You guys have been working pretty hard on and, and advancing at a pretty good pace. Well, there's a few things right now, George. Uh, number one, the world is still really uh, rushing to develop these things. There's a lot of research dollars being poured into graphene research, quantum dot research. So there's actually a, a pretty good business case for us to start producing small scale, high quality lab, uh, lab quality material that we can sell into these research groups, whether it's universities or uh, high-end uh, research facilities. So our plan is actually to start uh, that process in Q1 2020. So we're looking to start selling products into those markets in you know small-scale uh, versions. Uh, if you look at Sigma Aldrich right now as one of the providers in, in that field, you know they're selling half a gram of graphene oxide for $500 Canadian. If you look at quantum dots, they're selling 50 milligrams at $196 Canadian. That's $4,000 Canadian per gram for quantum dots. So these products right now command very high prices when you can produce them at very high qualities. So our goal right now is to uh, take advantage of these small markets where you know I can't really give you a definition of how big those markets are right now, but these we are talking about lab uh, quality, uh, small research quantity, uh, but the prices that are there right now are extremely attractive for us, and uh, you know we plan on starting that uh, in 2020, hopefully Q1 2020 here. What kind of quantities? And I know what you mean. Like, okay, so these are these are uh, getting high values from the market, so you don't have to produce a whole lot of it. What kind of quantities are you targeting for Q1, Q2 ballpark? Honestly, we're talking about a, you know a few kilograms, maybe a, a, some tens to twenties kilograms. Uh, it's not a large market. We really won't know until we get into it, but it can really help us fund ourselves. And um, you know, from a company perspective, trying to minimize dilution, if we can self-fund ourselves through this, uh, you know, we're we're going to be in a great position. Right, and that's the goal. Yeah, because it sounds like you. That's, it's not like that's your 
that's your business case at the end of the day, but just from the numbers you gave us, if you're able to do 10 kilograms of some of this high value product, that generates meaningful revenue for the company to, to keep financing things. You've got this new production method also that you mentioned on September 27th, ECE. Uh, I didn't say the name because I'll let you handle the name, but you know, why is that important? That's actually a big breakthrough for us. Uh, electrochemical exfoliation has been uh, named by the Graphene Council as the method to produce the best quality uh, of graphene oxide in the marketplace. Uh, this method uh, produces uh, a very high yield for us. Um, I can't say too much about it right now. We're, we're, we're still doing some, some of the characterization work, uh, but we're looking at a, a bit of a breakthrough for us in this field. Um, what I really like about it is when you look at the current pricing structure, uh, again, put out by the Graphene Council, uh, what they define as very few layers, which is one to three layers, versus the few layer graphene that we had with our other method, the price differential there is about an 8x. So again, we are trying to target the highest value applications, the highest, and to do that, you need the highest quality products. And this ECE process will help us get there where we can match the high demand of certain fields, uh, including batteries, um, by this process. Now, the other process that we licensed in May is still a very good process, and I would expect more probably bulk sales out of that one. Uh, that one might be better suited for uh, polymers and that, uh, you know, those kinds of composites. Uh, but for the very high end, high potential revenue, uh, high margins, this EC process is, is a real breakthrough for us, and we're working on uh, scaling that up right now. Uh, and potentially starting production of with that process in our facility uh, in early 2020. All right, so it looks like the first six months of 2020 are going to be are going to be pretty exciting. And I'm glad you're saying that because there's a reason why I I want to you know really drill down a little bit on commercialization. There's a lot of noise in the space, right? I want to play devil's advocate here. There's a lot of people out there claiming we're going to create graphene, we're going to produce graphene, we're going to change the world. Almost to the point that I think a lot of watchers, you know, investors, people who observe in the space are almost kicking back and saying, well, let's just wait to see who separates themselves from the pack because, you know, George's Graphene Company claims this and Bob's Graphene Company. How do you address that? How do you address that concern that people might look at Zen and say, well, you're maybe just part of the noise? It is a challenge, George. Uh, there's a lot of muddy water out there because of this. Uh, um, University of Singapore actually did a research project on this. They went around and didn't tell anybody what they were doing, but they bought graphene from 60 different companies out there, and all 60 samples were uh, basically said to be cheap graphite, and they were trying to charge you know, very high graphene prices for these products. So there's a lot of noise out yeah. there, and, and we have to live with that, but all we can do is really keep driving our message, our brand, and uh, letting people know what we're doing. And once we start selling our products, I think that'll be a game changer. And again, we're talking to and working with a lot of end users. Uh, we're working with a lot of universities. They keep telling us how great our product is. Uh, at some point here, uh, I can see the market recognizing us, but we can't you know, wait on that. We just got to keep pushing our business plan forward here. I guess there. I guess it's, uh, it's probably wishful thing to think there might be some graphene standard or some graphene association to kind of differentiate everybody. So, is the differentiator ultimately for you going to be actual sales, actual commercial sales, even at small sizes where people are using it, they're happy with it, and then the word gets out? Is that is that the way you differentiate yourself in 2020? Well, I'll address your first point. There is the ISO, the International uh, Standardization Organization, finally came out with uh, definitions of graphene about okay. 18 months ago. So that finally created a glossary uh, and a definition for graphene. And that's been very helpful. Really eliminated a lot of the noise out there. People that had products that were 50 and 60 layers saying, yeah, we have graphene. Well, they can't claim that anymore because they don't meet the ISO definition of graphene. So the industry is evolving. We're seeing it. Uh, you know, ISO getting involved here was very helpful. And 
you know, our ECE process here, we're targeting that one to three layer market that that's a very high end market. And we'll be able to, um, you know, say that with the ISO definition now. So that's been very helpful. One last question before I ask you a specific, uh, a general industry question before I dive into a specific about Zen is, do you think we're finally, can we see the finish line for graphene commercialization around the world, not just from your company, but from maybe a couple of other companies? Are we there? Because graphene has been this great promise for over a decade now. And, you know, are we finally there, you think, or we, do we still have a, while, a way to go? I think we're getting there, George. It, it's almost like the steel and the plastics when they came around. Um, you know, we never envisioned 50 years later what we'd be doing with steel or with plastic. I think there's going to be innovation here with graphene for decades to come. But for that to happen, we need the market, the world needs a steady supply of high quality graphene products. And I think that's something that's been missing. We're getting a lot of high quality GNP from some, you know, a few companies, um, but the high quality um, graphene oxide, reduced graphene oxide, quantum dots in industrial uh, quantities, I think those are starting to come on board now. And I think that's gonna be the game changer here. Francis, you guys have done a lot since you launched your proxy battle and took over the company or management of the company in May of 2018. You've done a tremendous amount. We're not even 18 months into it, but you're, you're almost there. What, is the net, what does 2020 look like if everything goes as planned and nothing goes completely as planned, but you know, you've been pretty good. Zen has been really good at hitting marks that it's set for itself. What does 2020 look like for everybody at home to kind of have a vision? You know what, George, we're really excited for 2020. We've done a lot of the groundwork uh, in the last 17 months, 18 months since we took over. That work now has created a very solid foundation for us. We've got relationships. Uh, with end users. We've got relationships with universities. We're finally in our own research and production center. Yep. We are positioned for 2020 to be our year. Um, we're going to start entering the market with some products. I think there's a lot of people in the marketplace that just don't believe we can deliver what we say we can deliver. So when we actually step in and start delivering some of these products, start generating revenue, start generating um, you know, potential commercial deals with some of these end users. Um, these are all the things that we're targeting for 2020. So we're, we're very excited for the next, you know, 12, 16 months here. Um, there's a lot of work that's been done to position us here, and I, we've got a great team. Uh, it's a small, nimble team, but we've accomplished great things in a short amount of time. Uh, but the next 12 to 16 months here is where I expect to have a lot of value creation events to occur. Yeah, and I got to tell you, a lot of people make, you know, a lot of claims of what the next 12, 15 months is going to look like. But given what you guys have been able to do, now you've got your own small-scale production facility. You've got this new production process, ECE, this great research partnership. Uh, I think you guys are set. You're there. So it's just a case of execution, which is something, you know, I can't determine. But uh, you've, you've given some pretty good answers about what the first you know, few months of 2020 looks like. So. I think I'll be out everyone at home. I say, you know, we wish you good luck and Godspeed with it because the graphene industry certainly needs it. And it'd just be great for, you know, for the small cap investment, for the small cap investor community in, in, in general, just to have a success story like Zen Graphene Solutions come along. Thanks, George. Uh, again, all we can do is keep working hard and delivering, and we've been doing that. Uh, and I expect the next 12 to 16 months for us to be really key here. Thanks for joining us, Francis. Great interview, great information, and uh, and good luck for the rest of 2019. I'm sure we're going to have you back. As I was working, uh, given the pace of news you've been putting out over the summer uh, and the things you've been doing, I'm sure we're going to have you back. But thanks for joining us today. Thanks, George. Much appreciated. Take care. You've been watching Francis Dubé. He's CEO of Zen Graphene Solutions. The company trades on the TSX Venture Exchange on the stock symbol ZEN. You've watched Francis. You've heard his answers. Now the due diligence is up to you. Get to Agoracom, punch in the company's name and stock symbol. Take a look at the profile information there to get up to speed, kind of summarize everything. Watch the previous interviews we've done with Francis because they've been great interviews and he talks about things months ago and a year ago that he's actually delivered on. And then link over to the company's website because as Francis said earlier, they've got a brand new website with great information, really refined, and that should complete your due diligence and then the decision is up to you. But keep watching Zen Graphene Solutions. Keep watching Agoracom, 
Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.